when I was a kid, there's nothing I loved to do more than go to some place that I was told was spooky, scary, creepy. Just generally not right. If you told me there was a ghost somewhere, I would already be planning how to get there. Like the moment you said you're done, like, and the address would be, because I just needed to know. I was fascinated with haunted houses and haunted battlefields. Just put the word haunted on something, I I'd show up. As I've gotten older, I have some feelings about what haunted really means. So don't worry, we're not just going to talk about the theory of haunted houses today. We're going to share some ghost stories too. So come on with me as we walk down this spooky lane through creation's paths. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie. I am a Christo Pagan Druid and Priest of Bridget. Hello, my name is Brian. I'm an adventurer and sous chef to the Dogdo. And today we're going to be talking about haunted houses. Why do houses get haunted? What's really haunting the houses? Are haunted houses really a thing? And some of our experiences with haunted houses. But before we get into all that, if you haven't already, don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, whatever the terminology is on the app that you're listening to us on to this episode. It really does help us out a lot. Plus, we do original Christo Pagan and Druidic videos, Druidic content every Monday through Friday, and you don't want and you don't want to miss a thing, especially with Sawin coming up. We still have some Sawin prep episodes, believe it or not, because there's a lot to do to get ready. So go ahead, do that, and then let's get on with it. Haunted houses. <laughs> I love me a haunted thing. It is the easiest way to get me to go to some place. Like, I, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to go to her, but it's haunted. You tell me more. Ever since I was a kid. Ever since I was a kid. And a lot of that had to do with we lived in quite a few haunted houses over the years. When we moved to Maryland, the apartment complex itself had a whole herd of ghosts that would come in, visit, move things around. They would move from apartment to apartment. I was really nervous talking to other people about these experiences. And then some of my friends were like, so have you seen him yet? And I'm like, seen who? And then we would start talking and sharing stories. And it was amazing. So I feel like... I need to get there right off the bat. I think you should too. Let's come out the broom closet. I definitely believe spirits haunt houses. I have memories that go way, way back. One of my earliest ones was being accused of having a very creative imagination when I was creating my, quote unquote, creating my imaginary friends. It was not a creative imagination. These were the stories the spirits were sharing with me that I was then sharing with my parents because I was having conversations with them. Like a normal conversation would happen. There was a, one of my grandmother's neighbors. Her house was haunted. I was caught having a conversation with one of the more active spirits that was haunting the house by my grandmother who yelled at me and told me, he knows what he did. Don't talk to him anymore and chewed me into the house, every now and then would give me dirty looks for the rest of my life that she was around. But that's the sensitive side of the family, though. That was when I realized, wait, they can't be imaginary friends because Grandma sold them too, and I got yelled at for talking with them. Apparently, when they tried to talk to me again, I said, Grandma said, you know what you did. They got really upset and stopped. And I heard stuff getting smashed in the house. I guess they knocked things over. I don't know. They were, they were not happy about it. Now, I'm not saying all hauntings are real. And I think this is where we have a really big problem when we're talking about spooky stuff is there's this real black and white worldview that comes over everybody. Either all hauntings are real or all hauntings are fake. Some are real. Some are, you have kids. Some are, you've got a squirrel living in your attic and you don't know that. Or a raccoon. That's what that is. Or a very, very big rodent. Maybe, maybe not with wings. Some are emotional scars that repeat over and over and over. Just wanted to, I thought, since we're making a, a non-exhaustive list. Well, actually, that's a good <laughs> way of getting into this. Because what is this? We've often talked on this podcast about how magic is a flow of energy. Sometimes there are eddies. Sometimes there are spirals. There are offlets. There are lakes and ponds and all this kind of water imagery. Because I think flowing works well when trying to think about magic. Sometimes something so profound happens to a place that it changes the topography of the area and it leaves petrified footprints in the area. 
Because you know how we can find footprints that have been turned into stone over time. It's a lot of hauntings are just that. The energy kind of got worn into the area in such a rut that it seems to replay over and over and over again. When, when the energy is just right, when it just hits it just right, it's like those, uh, my grandmother used to have these prism glasses that you would put around the room and when the sun hit them just right, they would project an image on the wall. They were really, really cool. And I wonder who took them after she died. But, oh, they disappeared while we were at the funeral. But anyway, they were really cool. That's kind of what most hauntings are. The terrain has been shaped in such a way that when the energy hits it just right, it replays whatever marked the area. And I say it that way because most spooky things are spooky because we only see the dark side of things. We have a bias towards the negative because it's much more important for us to know if that's a snake or a tiger than it is anything else. So we tend to remember bad things more than good things. But I have seen residual hauntings that are like where somebody proposed to someone. Yeah. Or a great love affair start. Mm. Like there are actually positive hauntings. It also makes sense because if this is a strong emotional energy imprint, then any strong emotion could do that. Yes. It doesn't have to be a murder or something dark or evil. It could be, like you said, a proposal. Uh, Which is where I get really, really frustrated because so many people focus on, like, this is where a murder happened. Oh, you have a ghost. There must have been a murder here. Somebody must have died in this location. First of all, most hauntings that people are going to encounter are residual hauntings. I have been at high schools and I have been at colleges where at a certain time of year, out of the corner of your eye, you see movement and it's somebody going to get their diploma. It just got etched in. It could just be over the years, so many people etching in. It might not be one particular person. It just got etched in. But there you see somebody go up on stage and get back down because they always use that auditory. What is the, one of the places I love going to is Harper's Ferry. They've spent so much time with ghost stories and playing up the haunted angle. There are quite a few places like that where they now have these etched repeats. But that's 99%, I would say. When people are talking about my house is haunted, like, I saw a figure out of the corner of my eye. This house is definitely haunted. Usually it's that. Or you have children. I'm not going to say a lot about that one, but I'll just put it to you this way. There is a very high correlation between poltergeist activity and small children, especially small children that are going through something very emotional. I tend to ask the question of where are the children and are they okay? And if there are no children in the family, are you okay? Yeah. Because that seems to be that something about the area is just right to focus the energy so that it is able to lash out and those negative feelings are able to manifest and things flying off the walls and stuff, things getting broken and whatnot. That, that's usually what that is. It's very rare that a spirit actually has enough to move things. Very rare. And those spirits should be respected. Yeah. For any of the best adventurers out there that like to go out hunt, uh, hunting, hunting. I don't like that phrase because I don't like Zach Baggins and he knows what he did. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. Dang it. Not to me, but if you don't know, yeah. yes. For non comporters Legend tripping. Yeah, legend, <laughs> legend tripping. That's something just to keep in mind. The minute you study to run into something that is able to affect the physical realm, odds are you're starting to get out of your depth. Yes. Now, what about intelligent hauntings? So, I would say of intelligent hauntings, probably 60 to 80% of the ones that I've encountered are the other crowd messing with people. I love it when people are like, I've never met a fae. I've never met the, a fairy in my life, but my house was super haunted and all this stuff was happening. And it's like, I haven't been to your house yet, but I am like 99% sure that one of the dentists, she has moved into your house okay. and is causing mischief. I would end to the point where generally I'm like, oh, you want to know a magical remedy to fix this? Get some pipe tobacco, and you need to put it into a very special vessel. Yeah. Very special sacred vessel to you. And then set it out near a plant, a house plant in the house. Within a week, it'll go away. And, yeah, because a lot of times, it's kobolds that are just messing with. Some, some kind of house spirit. Some kind of house spirit. They did something and upset it, and so now it's just having some fun. <laughs> I'm not saying all, but not like in, my, in my experience, yeah. most of it is that. Yeah. I think a lot of the doppelganger phenomenon that's going on with people hearing their own voice in other rooms and stuff. Oh, yeah. I think a lot of that is not actually a scary monster. I think it's their fetch trying to get them to be more authentically themselves. 
and try to get their, their attention. And it's causing panic because they don't know that we all have a spiritual twin that in some traditions is called the Holy Guardian Angel. In other traditions, it's called your fetch. It's your co-walker. There are a lot of names for it. On a side note, I mean, it makes a lot of sense just because one of the most terrifying things a person can do is to meet their authentic self. Oh. So that would be a terrifying experience, just psychologically speaking. Let's put all that aside. Just general psychology. Yep. There you go. <laughs> but it is possible for the spirits of the dead to hang out. Now, as I said before, I practice the fairy faith, which to me, when we pass over to the other side, we probably go out to Duck Don's house for a bit, lay out to Duck Doom, and just kind of hang out for a little bit. When I read the stories about Don's house, it's where you get ghost orientation. It's like the spirit, the, the, possibly the real world spirit play version of, uh, the book from the first Beetlejuice movie, the guy to the recently deceased, like, we're all going to go to Don's house. We're going to like, is everything okay? We're going to work through some stuff here. You're, you're dead now. Here's what that means. Your spirit. Da, da, da. And then you get to go off and do whatever you want. Sometimes that's adventuring in the great wide in the universe. Sometimes that's, uh, making sure that your family is okay or something that you love is fine. We, I have a grandmother who passed one of my grandmothers who passed who very much haunted my mom, well, all of her daughters, but my mom was actually living in her old house. And so if you said a bad word, a cuss word in the South, the toilet would flush. And unfortunately, some people learned this, turned it into a parlor trick, because you could just say a cuss word and the toilet would flush. That's grandma. Grandma hated cussing. She also was looking out for the family. She helped the family out a lot with various medical issues and stuff like that. Like she is one of the great ancestors in my line. So yeah, definitely, You're, the spirits of the dead can come back to these places. It is a weird idea to me, this notion that the, a spirit got trapped in a location, because I've been doing spirit work for 30 years now. Do you know how hard it is to trap spirit in anything? Like, just doing a magic circle to invoke a spirit into the circle, so you can send it away when you're done. Like, making sure that circle holds, making sure that they stay in there, that you drew it and it's actually connected all the way around and stuff. Like... Trapping a spirit is a non-trivial act of magic. Like, it's such a non-trivial act of magic that this is actually the root of all Solomonic magic. It's according to the story, he trapped the spirit of Osmodius, and Aphrodite found a way to escape, and thus an entire system of magic is born. I, I, I have a hard time believing that spirits are trapped. Now, I don't have a hard time believing that somebody who greedily possessed a track of land, a house, or something might be attracted to that place and want to stay there and keep it the way that it was. That's not the same as trapped. It was still a, a volition, a choice. Yes. Involved. Yes. Which is why you can often talk to talk them through, leave it. But it seems very odd to me, this kind of very modern notion that this spirit's trapped in this house. I don't really think that's how spirit works. Like from all of my experiences, that doesn't feel like how spirit works. Spirit seems to want to go wherever it wants to go. And some... People who are very possessive in life are still possessive in death. Some of those traits don't go away. So yeah, I, I can see certain people returning to the land that they loved. I could see people returning to the land that they worked hard for or felt that they were owed in some way and becoming either a positive or negative aspect there. In the fairy faith, we often talk about how you have the option of basically joining in and living like the other crowd for a while. And that we don't actually know what percentage of the other crowd are fae and what percentage are just ancestors who've decided to hang out. Maybe for so long that they've gone native. You know? we, we, there's literally no way of knowing. But a trapped spirit seems weird to me. Now, an obsessive spirit. I have noticed in my magical workings that if you always use a certain crystal, a certain statue, a certain ritual implement of any kind to communicate with a spirit, it will start to favor that means of communication. If you always use a certain scrying mirror or a pendulum or what have you. So it makes perfect sense to me that if a spirit's trying to get your attention and it found out if I creep these steps, they pay attention to me, kind of developing an attachment to that. I, I, I can see that. That makes sense with the experiences that I've had. But I, I think a lot of paranormal investigation is being done by people that aren't actually working with spirits and they're working with little electric boxes. I think it would be a lot more interesting for there to be more of an overlap between people who actually do spirit works and people who are trying to do more scientific 
stuff. But I've had a lot of weird experiences of houses. I remember when my sister moved into a farmhouse out by Walkersville in Maryland. Dad was walking around and he went down to the basement. They came back upstairs, white as a sheet, and said, yeah, I don't like the woman hanging in your basement. We all ran downstairs. We didn't see any. So my sister and I rushed out to the library because children, there was a time when there was no internet. Back in my day. Back in my day. So we rushed out to the library and we pulled up the local paper on microfiche. And even if you have access to the internet, go to your library and ask them to teach you how to use the microfiche machine. It's a lot of fun. And I'm sure the librarian will be like, oh, finally, I have an excuse to use it. If they still have one. We started going around trying to find anything to do with the house. And yeah, a uh, former owner way on back did hang herself in that basement. She fit the description of what my dad said. Sometimes an emotional event can leave a rut. We had an intelligent haunting in the apartment we were living in at this time there with an old man named John. Everyone in the apartment complex saw him at some point. Nice old man. Always walk around holding a cough cup. I don't know if there's anything in the coffee cup. I don't know if ghosts can drink. I, I don't know. So he was always carrying a coffee cup. And we would just sit and talk. I was going through a lot. And he would come into our room. And he really was a caring kind of guy. And everybody that in the apartments that had any interaction with him was like, yeah, he would come in and be like, you look trouble. You need to talk. And he'd sit down and just listen to you. Every now and then, maybe he'd tell you a story back in his day. Most of my experiences with spirits are kind of benign like that. Hello. We'll start with some of the, the fun hauntings from the restaurant. There were two of them that have hung out there. One was called The Whistler. This gentleman, he was a very much a trickster type spirit. Maybe, even, if not Dennis, he definitely had a lot of that energy. Of very him. other crowdy. Very other crowdy. Loved to whistle. Loved whistling, loved hearing whistles. They liked to hang out in the upstairs storage area. And so when the employees would, like, they would go up there to get something. And they'd be up there by themselves, and it's all kind of sort of dark and creepy. You know, imagine the upstairs storage area. You know, it'd be all kind of creepy. And they would use their presence to make it even, this, to add a feeling, a sense of spookiness. It was, it always amused me, because it was like a lot of stagecraft, basically, <laughs> with being employed, but through use of subtle energy. And then would whistle a tune. But usually it's a tune from that individual's, like, childhood a tune that nobody would know except for them. And it would almost always freak them out to their core because they would be like, they would think like their grandpa or someone who had passed away from their past was there at first. So they would have that triggered sense memory of hearing this tune. And they'd almost always come downstairs, slightly shaking, white as a sheet, completely freaked out. Or they'd yell at me and, and, and try to figure out how I figured out what that tune was. Of course, I'd have no idea. But that just added to the comedy to the whistler. So we, we had a new uh, night manager that we hired at the store. We warned her. Okay, so the music's on a timer. Don't be here after the timer. This place is very haunted. Don't yeah. be here after the timer. They will make themselves known and they will freak you out. So... If the music is off, do not turn off the, do not the music. Do not turn off the music. Repeated it several times. Do not turn off the music. This is during her first week closing up on her own. All of a sudden, Brian's phone starts going off. And we look over and it's text message after text message after text message. Whole bunch of expletives. Whole bunch of just, I mean, she's having a panic attack. We're like, is the place on fire? What's going on? Like, what, 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 what's going on? So a whole bunch of, and then she says say something about, you were right. That place is effing haunted. I'm never going to be there. So we're like, wait a minute. So we loaded up the security cameras and we round back to, there she is. He's in the hallway. So you're going to the office. We hear the music turn off. And she goes back into the restaurant and there's all manner of sounds. You can hear chairs moving, glasses clinking, voices. You can hear whistling in the background. She panics and runs out, just runs out. And you can hear it as clear as day on the recording after she leaves. It really scared her, didn't we? Yeah. It was crazy. It was, it was all recorded. It was great. And <laughs> she did not give us permission to share the video. That's the only reason it's not yeah. anywhere. And yeah. I would love to share that video. Oh, it scared her so bad. So bad. So bad. I was like, look, just, just leave the music on. You'll be all right. Because they're not going to bother doing any if the music's on because they, they know you are not going to share them. Nope, they didn't listen. 
Piano Man's the other one. We call him Piano Man because he's very big into music. He really enjoys the music, which is part of why we leave the music play because he liked the playlist and would generally just be cool about things as long as the playlist is going. He stopped the music and he gets a little worked up and bored and starts doing things. He was uh, very big into respect, but he had a bartender who was very disrespectful. I couldn't tell you the number of glasses that went flying off the shelf and slap her upside her head when she got a little too far. We had a patron that he flipped their beer up into the air and spilled it on their lap. So oh, yeah. Got yeah. that one on film too. Yeah, that, that one was... We were just sitting on the bar, straight up in the air, sploosh, went was... right into his lap. Okay, so that one, earlier that day, he thought it was funny when we were talking about the ghost stories and decided to mess with them a bit. And I warned him, don't mess with them. They're going to get back at you. And he thought it was funny. He's right-handed. He drinks with his right hand. Because we, we went back, we watched it on tape. He's in conversation with the person next to him, grabs his beer and shifts it just slightly with his left hand. And then next thing you know, a uh, mule cup, metal cup, goes ping and flies up in the air, hits the bar, knocks a martini glass over. The liquid pours out of it hits the beer, redirecting it just right to land in his crotch to make it look like he peed himself. It was yeah. perfectly executed. Like, I'm just like, this setup is brilliant. Like, I, I mean, I, I respect a good Rube Goldberg type setup, and this was definitely that level. Call him the piano man, because I brought in my ghost fox one night. We're all sitting there asking questions to the ghosts, and we asked the one ghost, what would he like to be called? And he said, you can call me the piano man. And I said, what, why the piano man? And he said, I like it when she sings. Now, there was only one she in the restaurant at the time. And we all turned around and looked at her. And she looked right up at the balcony where he liked to hang out and said, you promised you'd never tell. Yeah. It got really upset. It was really funny. We find out that she would, while she was closing the restaurant, she would sing at night. And she pr promised if we had a piano, she would sing more. And so we said, oh, so that, that's the deal. Well, we don't have the money to buy a piano. And over the ghost folks, we heard... Can I get you one? Sure, sure. If a piano just shows up on our door for free and we don't have to pay anything for it, we will definitely put the piano here and she will have to sing for you. And a couple days later, we got a call from somebody who was cleaning out a property and they were like, so there's this piano. And we thought it might be nice decor for you. I know you do live acts sometimes. They might want to play it. Would, would you like to? Yeah. And we were like, oh, well, dumbstruck. Yeah. Of course, she was panicked because she's just like, wait, oh, no, I'm going to have to sing. Of course, I'm thinking, you already sing every night when you close. So it's really no difference. But OK, but she was like panicked. We almost ended up. We almost ended up. We almost ended up with the free piano. So something happened at the last minute. And they, they I changed. think somebody made them an offer for it. I think somebody bought it for and them. And they, they, yeah, they, they took the money instead. and given it to us for free. Yeah. But and so if you see the thumbnail for this, I, I did a really naughty for the thumbnail because my favorite haunted house is one out on South Mountain in Maryland. So the best ghost stories in the world happen on South Mountain out in Maryland. This is the story of the Sabbath house. Now Sabbath house is a house that's supposed to appear ever so often in the light of the full moon. It's there, then it's gone. There are all kinds of stories about if you actually get inside the house before it disappears, it will take you away to wherever it goes with it. And so of course we all decided, well, let's go try to find the Sabbath house. This is before I met Brian and I wish I'd been on these adventures with him. Because we could have had a lot of crazy fun out in the woods. But me and my friends were running around. And we get to this place where we can see this kind of clearing up to the top of the hill. And clear as day, there's an old farmhouse up on the top of this hill. And we're like, I don't remember that being there. I just don't. We run around these woods all the time. I don't remember that being there. So we all start making our way up towards this old farmhouse on the top of the hill. And by the time we get there, there's no house on the hill. It's just gone. It was there. Plain as day. This is not a Fata Morgana. I know what a Fata Morgana looks like when the light diffracts just right to make a building that's further away look closer on the horizon. I know what that looks like. That's not what was going on here. This did not look like an illusion. It was really low to the ground. It was on the top of the hill. Fata Morganas usually look like they're floating in the sky. I don't know what this was. There was a house on top of that hill twice. Twice we went out there into the woods. We went out there looking for it more than twice, but twice while we were out there in the woods looking for it. I never got to the door. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Based on the stories, it's probably a good probably thing. Probably based on the stories. And this is something where I've gone hunting, hunting for the, the Sabbath house as well. Uh, there have been three different times where I saw it and it was not there later. 
I didn't go running for it because I didn't want to get oh, I wanted stuck. inside. I didn't want to get inside. I don't want to get stuck. But I definitely saw it. I was driving by and I just didn't stop. I kept going. And then when I came back, it was there was no house there. And it was just like, what a... It's one of those great memories of my youth because nothing is so beautifully haunted than seeing a house. Like a full Florida, house. Honest to God farmhouse up on the top of the hill and then getting to the top of the hill and there's nothing there there wasn't even like a foundation it's not like there used to be a house here we were seeing the yeah. ghost of the house or anything it's, it's not like it reappears in the same spot either it's no. different places yeah it's in different places so the three times i saw it completely different roads same house <laughs> roads. same house i just i described it to charlie Terry. i was like yeah, that's the same house <laughs> and i've only seen it twice but yeah it was the same house both times i love on the houses and i i really want to just share with people if you're living in a haunted house that is more than likely a privilege now yes some some guests some house guests can get a little pushy and sometimes and you need to be able to set your boundaries there are lots of ways to do that that are safe don't antagonize the spirits if you antagonize the spirits they will antagonize you right back and then you just become really annoying neighbors over the fence yelling at each other except for you're sharing one house so be mindful I cannot think of a haunting that I have ever encountered that was actually honestly dangerous. Spooky. Yeah. Scary sometimes. But I can't think of one that could actually hurt someone. And I think that our love of horror movies sometimes lets us go a little bit too far. Now, I do think that spirit possession is a thing, but that's not the haunted house's fault. That's you and the spirit that you're dealing with's fault if something like that happens. I think that, yes, you can get tripped and made fall down things like that but that's between you and the spirits it's not necessarily the haunted house and as long as we're putting up our protections and we're taking good care of ourselves and our environment i don't i love having a haunted house we're currently living in a haunted house yeah they like to say that we're on some kind of ghost super highway because there's a few regulars that live in our house but every now and then there's some new ones that just pass through yeah there's a bunch of different stuff that wanders through the other day there was something that wandered in that was all about tripping us mm -hmm. i had entire a cord laying across the floor, wrap completely around my leg. Trip <laughs> you, trip me, trip the dog, tripped at least two of the cats. Yeah. You've never and seen anything to you see an angry cat that just got tripped by. Yeah. But once again, that's just about setting boundaries. And if you're good with your house spirits, your house spirits, you usually jump them and run them off, yeah. which isn't what happened. But yeah. We're like, yeah, this is, this is not safe. And they ran them off. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. I wanted to tell some fun stories, but also just to kind of talk about what haunted houses are because i think there's a lot of misunderstanding of well in and in the spirit of the spooky season let's share one more story with the piano man okay so don't antagonize the spirits they are not bound to the place they're at they can wander so oh, yeah i had a close friend who got into a tiff with the piano man and antagonized him and antagonized him because i don't know he was he likes trolling in general Mostly he just trolls people, but, you know, so I guess trolls will train. And he decided to troll the piano man. He would go to walk out. The door is not latched. It, you just push it open. And there'd be times where it would, would not move. And he'd walk his face into the door. He would trip over things. And so at first he's like, he just kept antagonizing more because he thought, I guess he thought it was funny. And this was all just happening at work. So, you know, whatever. He gets to go home and it's done. No, it followed him home. He antagonized enough. It followed him home. And it started knocking things over. And when it knocked a plant down in front of this person's mother, the mother pulled him aside, basically, and said, look, you're doing whatever you need to do to bring him back to the water and be done with it. <laughs> not having this anymore. Basically, she put her foot down and made sure that was done. And he had to make his amends because he's a good mama's boy. He might be a troll, but he's a very good mama's boy. He does what his mama tells him to do. And he did. He made his amends. And that was the end of it. But... Just don't antagonize. Don't antagonize. <laughs> don't make it worse. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're watching us either on Spotify or on YouTube, you may have noticed things look different. We're trying something out. Let's know what you think. You didn't say anything at first, but we're curious now. What do you think? Is this, is this a thing? If you don't watch and you just listen, that's great. Everything should still be going all along just as well for you. But if you do watch, I'm curious. What do you think? We did something different. All right. While you're over there on either Spotify or YouTube, if you have any comments, we would love to know, especially your spooky stories. If you've got a good fun of the house story, it doesn't have to be something that happened to you. It could be 
urban legend, a story that you've heard, cousin, friend, sibling, what have you. I, lo I love a good haunted house story. Let me know in the comments. That'd be great. If you listen to us anywhere else, you can leave a comment there, but they won't let us know that you did it. So after you leave it there for engagement, because that's important, you head on over to creationsbaths.com. You can click on the chat and leave your comment there, and we will be notified and be able to have a conversation with you. I'd love to hear your story. While you're over there, if you happen to have a few dollars, you can pass our way and sign up for a membership. That helps us out a lot to keep the lights on, keep food on our table, and keep a roof over our head. You can also support us on Patreon and Ko-fi. I see you Dorset on both. As we're heading out into the world to get ready for this spooky season, may the hunter keep the great hunt away from you. Because when the wolves howl in the night and the horsemen are out there hunting their prey, you don't want to be the person that is pulled over to the other side. Bye.